water. Such a simple molecule. Just two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen. Small, innocuous, yet when combined with countless others, it has the power to reshape the entire planet. One of the basic building blocks of life, water is much more than just a simple liquid. Entrained in water is a whole world of microscopic materials. Sediment, organisms, dissolved minerals, even harmful chemicals. In this episode, we're going to investigate more than just the substance water. We're going to examine what is in our nation's water, how we at the U.S. Geological Survey monitor it, and what tools we have developed to aid those who want to explore more about our planet's most abundant resource. This is the USGS Oregon Science Podcast. The term water quality covers a vast range of physical and chemical traits of water. It can refer to any number of characteristics of water, such as dissolved or particulate matter trapped in the water column. This may include materials like dissolved minerals, sodium and potassium, for example or suspended particles, like organic carbon, which is basically broken down leaf litter or other decomposing organic matter, or fine-grained sediment, such as dirt washed away from hillsides. In addition, those who investigate water quality may be interested in other water properties, like acidity, or conductivity, or in the case of the greatest concern for most people, pollution. To help simplify this potentially overwhelming subject of water quality, we will focus on conditions in local streams here in Oregon. So living here in the Pacific Northwest, we really are blessed with some great water resources. We have wonderful streams and lakes. Oh, there's some places where people say, ah, oh, I wouldn't want to fish or swim in that river. Oh, it's disgusting. But you know, let's think, let's think about this problem with a little bit of perspective. Back in the 1930s and 40s, boy, you know, the Willamette, it was an open sewer. But there was a big cleanup that happened in the 1940s. And as we understood a little bit more about some of the types of water quality problems, there were successive cleanups. There was another big cleanup in the 1970s and then the 1990s. So today, you could go swimming in the Willamette River, you can go fishing in the Willamette River, and it's really pretty in pretty good condition. Dr. Stuart Rounds is the USGS Water Quality Specialist in Oregon. As with most hydrologists, Stuart has always had a passion for water. You know, water quality has always been something that interested me ever since I was a kid. And I wanted to know how things work. And I look at a river and I, I want to know more about it. I want to know where the water comes from, uh, how good the water quality is, whether it's good for fish, what it's carrying, where it's going to, how things change. Uh, understanding processes and natural systems. It's just fascinating. Dr. Round's research focuses on water quality monitoring of rivers and lakes, including water temperature, nutrient transport, and water-related concerns due to algae. What types of problems do algae cause in our local rivers? Well, that all depends on how much algae there is. So algae is an important thing that we study, and it's not entirely a bad thing, right? Algae is the base of the food chain. If we didn't have algae, then we wouldn't have anything for the zooplankton to eat. And if the zooplankton didn't eat anything, well, we wouldn't have any f food for the fish. And if we don't have fish, well, you can take it from there. So algae is good in many ways because it's the base of the food chain. On the other hand, we don't want too much of a good thing because then it can lead to pH levels that are too high, which is not good for fish. Or when the algae are no longer growing, they can use up too much oxygen and cause problems that way. Algae is just one of many parameters or characteristics of water quality that the USGS monitors. Other parameters commonly measured include water temperature, pH or acidity, and turbidity, which is the cloudiness or dirtiness of water. All of these data are collected and stored online in our National Water Information System, or NWIS, database. The water quality data are free and can be accessed through the NWIS website or through the online software package USGS Data Grapher. 
So the Data Grapher is a set of online tools that allow users to create customized graphs and tables of a whole variety of time series data that are served up by the U.S. Geological Survey. Let's start by looking at a time series graph from one site. In this example, let's take a look at some pH data from the Clackamas River near the mouth of that river at Oregon City. The results show you some of the inputs that you asked for and the graph. And you can see that the pH values in midsummer can reach relatively high values near 9, and that the patterns in pH decrease when the stream flow goes up. Another way to visualize those patterns in the pH data in the Clackamas River is to use a color map. The color map shows some interesting patterns that we saw in the time series graph. We had higher pH values at particular times in the spring and summer, and we had lower pH values for a time between those peaks when the discharge was higher. As part of its overall mission, the USGS measures the quantity and quality of the nation's waters. This work is completed through the use of a network of over 7,000 streamflow gauges. In Oregon alone, there are over 200 streamflow monitoring locations, many of which also continuously monitor different water quality properties. Each year, scientists like Dr. Rounds continue to observe lakes and rivers, and through new tools they develop, help explore how water quality changes in the world around us. For more on what the USGS is doing through its National Water Quality Assessment Program or through other cooperative programs in the state, please visit our Water Resources Information website at usgs.gov water. This podcast is a product of the U.S. Geological Survey, Department of the Interior.